Okay, let's see if we can get this thing a show on the road here. <clears throat> Faithful is the saying and worthy of all welcome. For for this we're toiling and being approached that we rely on the living God who is the Savior of all. Part 4. So, we've gone over faithful sayings. We've gone over it's worthy of all welcome. We've gone over how that we're toiling and being reproached for this matter. Now let's look at the fact that we rely on the living God. Okay? Reliance on God is a big deal because we were created by God. And of course we have to rely on God, but in our little lives, this is perhaps a big lesson. All of our lives are built on this method of God teaching us that we have to rely on the living God. We can't rely on our own strength. You know, we, we come down, Adam made sure of that. Adam ate of the fruit and he caused everybody to start dying because God told him that in the garden, in the day that you eat of that fruit, that forbidden fruit, to die shall you be dying. That's the correct verb form there in Genesis. He didn't say that on the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. That's not the right verb form translated correctly. It's to die shall you be dying. In other words, the dying process started and we're all dying. And we all must learn to rely on the living God. <clears throat> we're not the only ones. Throughout the Bible, we can see the story of Jonah. He, he, he went to preach at Nineveh. He didn't want to go there voluntarily. He didn't go there of his own free will. God had to throw him into a storm and then throw him into the whale's belly. All for the purpose of teaching him. Do you think he could rely on his own abilities in the belly of the whale? No, he had to learn to rely on God. And how about Joseph? Joseph was sold into slavery by his own brothers. Ha! Ha. Did I spell it right? Um, he had to learn to rely on, on God. And it turned out to be great because he became the prime minister of Egypt and actually saved his own brothers who had sold him into slavery. Even Christ when he was facing the cross, he had to rely on God to save him from the cross, from the, ex the experience of death. Christ had to have faith in God, and we are saved by Christ's faith. <clears throat> Look at the lesson of Noah. He had to rely on God. <laughs> God told him there was gonna be a flood. He built an ark. He and eight people were saved. Look at our, our brother Paul, the one who brought us the evangel of grace. His whole experience in presenting the idea that God is the savior of all was nothing but trouble and toil and jail sentences and beatings. There was nothing in him that was so strong that he could rely on his own strength he had to rely on the living God. That is our lot too. For, for, for this we are toiling and being reproached because we rely on the living God. And this reliance is sometimes, it, it gets stronger. Sometimes our, our reliance on God is a little weak and God comes through. And especially in the matter of the living God, God is the savior of all mankind. All mankind experiences death. We can't save ourselves from death. We need to be saved from death by the living God. He is the savior of all mankind. <clears throat> so the free willers out there in the Christian church have no idea about this. This is one reason they hate this verse. 
because they don't rely on the living God. They, they rely on their own faith, their own ability, their own strength, their own prayer, the sinner's prayer to save them. No, God doesn't save you according to your own actions. He saves you according to grace, his own grace. What is grace? Grace is the favor that God shows to those who deserve the opposite of favor. And that's all of us. We rely on the living God. And who is the living God? Why, well, he's the savior of all mankind. He's the savior of all mankind. Okay, <clears throat> so let's move on <clears throat> now to this part here, especially believers. Uh, Paul wrote a letter to Timothy, in 2 Timothy, I believe it was, and he says to Timothy, bring, bring me the cloak that I left in Troas and bring me the parchments, uh, the scrolls. He said, bring me the scrolls also, especially the parchments, the vellums, they're called vellums. And what are the parchments, what are the vellums? They're the scrolls that have no writing on them because he wanted to write more letters. Bring me the scrolls, especially the parchments. The word especially doesn't mean leave behind the scrolls. It means I have a temporary urgent need for the, the parchments. Bring me the scrolls, especially the parchments. And here we see two aspects of God's great operation. He is the savior of all mankind and he is the savior especially of believers. The believers get a special salvation, a temporary salvation, a, an urgent salvation because God is intends to use the believers of today to be a main vehicle to reconcile the whole universe. You can see this in Ephesians and Colossians that we're not the sole expectant ones in the Christ, we're the pre-expectant ones in the Christ. So God is especially the savior of believers because he intends to use the believers in the oncoming eons in a, as a display. He's gonna put us on display so that the celestial beings will see how gracious God was to us. So we can see that God has two operations going on right here. He's got the operation of being the savior of all, and he's got the operation of being especially the savior of believers. It's a temporary blessing to bring us in in such a way before he brings the rest in. But he doesn't exclusively save believers. This is not exclusive salvation of believers. We believe that God raised Christ from the dead and therefore, God calls us out for a special calling. And you need to spend a lot more time in Paul's letters to get the picture here. That God is the savior of all mankind, especially but not exclusively of believers. Okay, we'll make this one a little short. Let's highlight especially. And on the next time, we'll spend some time th talking about verse 11, these things be charging and teaching. But right now we're relying, we're trusting. King James says we trust in the living God. Okay, trust, rely, it's pretty close. We trust in the living God who is not only the creator of all mankind, but the savior of all mankind. We rely on him because he is the especially the savior of believers. We're in. It's a good news project here. Okay. One last time and then we'll sign out. Faithful is the saying and worthy of all welcome. For for this we're toiling and being reproached that we rely on the living God who is the savior of all mankind, especially of believers. Grace.